Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to prove the arcsine logarithmic formulation, which basically relates how to go from the natural log to the arcsine. Now, this is a very, very specific formula, but it is very useful in a lot of quite difficult integrals. And I'm going to have a few examples of where those integrals pop up in my physics videos. In particular, it pops up when you solve a few problems, for example, in the WKB formulation, um, but it does sh uh, show up in other circumstances as well. So we wish to prove this thing right here. Now, this isn't um, terribly difficult. So what do we want to do? The, how can we prove something? You always have to keep in mind the thing that you wish to prove. So we need to somehow relate signs and logs. Now we know that the sign for the sign function can be expressed in terms of exponentials. And if we have exponentials, maybe at some point we can go to the logarithm. So um, that's perhaps the route that we wish to take. So let's begin by writing just that the arc sine of x, this is equal to some function y. Uh, or some variable y, doesn't matter, depends on the context. Now, this of course implies that x is the sine of y. All right, so nothing new there. However, and now it is that we wish to begin introducing uh, the different formulation of the sine, we know that the sine we can write as e to the i y minus e to the minus i y divided by 2i, right, due to Euler's formulas. So we now get that this is equal to x. So from here, let's isolate our exponentials. So e to the i y minus e to the minus i y, this is equal to 2i x. Now, how do we get rid of this y? Because what we want to, or basically, how can we apply the natural log here? Well, applying the natural log at the moment isn't really feasible because we don't have one single exponential, we have two. So if we were to apply the natural log on both sides, here we wouldn't really get anywhere. So first we need to do some sort of algebraic manipulation. So what we wish to do is get rid of one of those exponentials. So what we can do is multiply both sides by e to the i y because when we do that we will get rid of this negative exponent so we will get e to the 2 i y minus 1 is equal to 2 i x e to the i y now this may not really look like we made much progress because we still have two different exponentials but notice that we have e to the 2 i y which is the square of this term right here and we have x we have y we have two so i'm gonna write it very to to make this very suggestive so e to the 2iy minus this part so minus 2ix e to the iy and i'll put the minus one to the other side i leave some space there and you will see why so we have this now what if we had minus x squared here, right? We can subtract minus x squared from both sides. So what is this? We have e to the 2iy, which is this thing squared, and minus x squared, which is um, this thing squared, and we have two times that. So what we have right there is simply a perfect square. So that is e to the iy minus i x and all this is squared now we can ensure that this is correct so this thing squared gives us this then the product of these two gives us minus two times i x e to the i y which is precisely this and finally this thing squared is minus x squared so this is equal to one minus x squared now what we can do is take the square root so let's take the square root here and we get that e to the i y minus i x is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Of course, notice that our x is constrained in its value, right? 
Um, it can't go any greater than 1 or minus 1, um, but that's also the constraint in the arc sign, so it isn't really any new information. And from here, we can now isolate the exponential, which is precisely what we wanted. So e to the i y, this is the square root of 1 minus x squared plus i x. And now we can take the natural log. So we take the natural log of e to the i y, which is simply i y. And on the right side, we get the natural log of the square root of 1 minus x squared plus i x. And now we can isolate y. So y is here we can divide by i. So we get 1 over i times the same natural log. So nothing has changed. So 1 minus x squared plus i x. And something we can do is multiply and divide by i here. So basically, we multiply and divide by i. It isn't necessary, but I like this notation more. So we get i in the numerator and i squared, which is minus 1 here. So we get minus i. And finally, what is y? Well, at the very beginning, we said y is the arc sine of x. So let's rewrite this and we get that the arc sine of x is equal to minus i times the natural log over the square root of 1 minus x squared plus i x. So with this, you can go from the arc sine to the natural log, or if you have a natural log that is of this form, you can go to the arc sine. Now this may be useful in a plethora of different contexts, um, so I hope that you can um, use it at some point and this derivation was useful to you. So thank you very much for watching. If it was useful, please consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, and maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.